Hey, what's up everyone? Today, this week, we are in a brand new series called Family Matters. When you think of the word family, what comes to mind? I personally, I think about my childhood. I grew up in a two-parent household, my twin brother and our little brother who's four years younger than us. <laughs> my dad, he was pretty strict. It was either his way or the highway. My mom, she was small, but she was strong. She held the house down. I, I can tell you a quick story about my mom real quick. Every time she would spank my brothers and I, we would do this thing where we would literally chuckle or we'd laugh because we, uh, oh, it just didn't hurt. And now that I think back at it, I don't know if she was afraid to hurt us or maybe she just didn't have enough power. But one thing that always put me in line is when she said, Samson, I'll meet the day Oshita. Translation, Samson, go sit your butt down somewhere. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know where that came from. But, but either, either way, then you have my twin brother, Joel. He was rough around the edges, gravitated more towards the street. And when I say he gravitated more towards the street, not saying that he was a thug or he was in and out of jail or anything like that, but he just had zero tolerance for disrespect. Whereas me, I guess, you know, I, I found ways to talk my way out, ways out of fighting. Whereas Joel, he just, you know, a man of little words, let's just say that. And then Solomon, our younger brother, four years younger than us, he'd always want to hang with my twin brother and I, and we would shoo him away. We would tell him to go home. And it wasn't that we didn't want to hang with him. It's just that my brother and I, we hung around the older kids in the neighborhood, and we didn't want him to be exposed to things that we were exposed to. But what did it do? It motivated him to, I guess, work on his game. He grew up playing basketball and football. But man, three boys growing up in the same household. Every day was eventful. And when I say eventful, I mean, everyone had different personalities. And, and with me, I can't lie, I struggled a lot with arrogance, always thinking I was right. My dad used to put a lot of pressure on me to be a leader because I was the uh, oldest boy. And oftentimes because of it, we often butt heads. I can vividly remember at the tender, tender age of 11 or 12 years old, uh, I was just fed up. I said, you know what, I'm sick of this, I'm out. I proceeded, or I made a conscious decision to run away from home. I emptied out the duffel bag. I grabbed two loaves of bread, stuffed it in my duffel bag, and I ran. I ran as fast as I could. I got a block away, got a little tired, so I walked the next block. By the time I got to the third block, I'm tired, not sure where I should go. I found this green transformer, it's like a green, transformer cable box. I hid behind it. I proceeded to open up the duffel bag and I'm like, I'm just gonna sit here and just eat this bread. And you know, I'm eating this bread and I realized that, wait, <laughs> I don't have anything to drink. Or, or better yet, I, I realized that I hadn't packed any water. I, I didn't pack any juice. And here I am, four slices of bread in. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. I think I made the wrong decision. So what do I do? You guessed it right. I headed right back home, man. And when I got back to the crib, my parents, like I wasn't even gone long enough for my parents to even realize that I had run away from home. I say that story to say, on the spectrum of awesome to awful, families are rarely in the middle. See, it can be awesome and then it'll change in an instant to awful. See, every family is unique. No family looks the same. No family acts the same. But one thing that all families have in common is that it's complicated. See, the truth is there's so many different perspectives, different opinions, uh, different needs, different wants, different ways of communicating that when we add those recipes together, it's just a recipe for disaster. And then, there's this one twist. If you have an active faith in Jesus, it adds to the complication as well. And, or it adds to the mix as well. I know you thought I was gonna say if you have an active faith in Jesus, maybe it'll make things better. But for the most part, 
it still adds this complication. So much so, it forces us into thinking or believing that faith and family cannot coincide with one another, as if faith is one thing and family is another. We're going, we're going to be looking at a passage in John 13. We see Jesus along with his friends. They live together. They travel together for three years. It's safe to say that they were more than his friends. They were his family. And just to set the, the stage or to give you even some context, this was the night that Jesus was arrested, the night before Jesus was killed. And we see him having this final meal with his friends. Now, just like we love our complicated family, Jesus loved his disciples. Even though they didn't do all the things that they were supposed to do, or they didn't, didn't do everything right, Jesus still loved them. And knowing his time was coming to an end, listen to what he did. In John 13, three through five, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. You want to talk about awkward? Imagine those feet how disgusting, how nasty they were. We're talking about that those guys used to walk around on dirt roads with sandals on. Here it is, Jesus is washing their feet. Guys, Jesus is an authority. Only servants did those things. But here we find the disciples acting the same way that I probably would have acted, right? How do we respond to this crazy act of kindness? And then, and then check this out. Jesus then goes on to explain that one of you guys at this table will betray me. Can you imagine the tension in the room? Like everyone looking around at each other like, yo, yo, who, who, who's, he, who's he talking to? Who's he talking to? Or who's he talking about? Betray? And then he calls out Peter in front of everyone. And he says, Peter, <laughs> you would deny our friendship. Can you imagine, Peter? You want to talk about tension or you want to talk about a complicated moment? Peter is like, wait, wait, what do you mean? And here's Jesus, right? Like, hey, look, I know you're my ride or die. I know you'll fight for me. I know you'll kill for me. Peter, I know you're my rock, but not only will you uh, deny our friendship, but you will deny even knowing me. <laughs> you know, later on, if you continue to read, in that passage of John 13, verses 34 and 35, Jesus gives his disciples one command. He tells them to love one another just as he has loved them. And because of this, people will know that they are his disciples. So I guess the question that we should pose to ourselves is, what are we doing so that people know that we are followers of Jesus? simple love that that's exactly what we should be doing is loving people see demonstrating love in difficulty it changes us it makes us more like Christ more like Jesus and, and some of you might be wondering like you know Samson I, I, what is love right and, and to tell you the truth I can't tell you what love is right but Paul can in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, here's what Paul says love is and what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. If you want your faith to help your family, show love as much as you can. And remember, when it comes to your faith and your family, love matters 
Most.